Hello boys and girls, as you might have seen, yes, it's time to talk about bass guitars again. And whenever we're talking about bass guitars on this channel, it's about the dark and evil and dirty side of bass. Distorted tones, because everything else is boring. Not really, but distortion is fun. The reason for this video is that there's a new kid on the block. There's a new plugin. Actually, a very ugly child, to be honest. <laughs> An emulation of a legendary bass amp, which isn't even a bass amp. An amp that I have been trying to get my hands on for a very long time, but I never managed to get one. It's the signature amp of a very unique and legendary bassist called Mr. Lemmy Fucking Kill Mr. Yes. So today, Softube are releasing the entire rig of Mr. Lemmy Kill Mr. This is the Murder One. It's fun to play, it's fun to play. So what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to dial in a pretty modern sounding bass tone, the one you just heard, by only using this plugin. I'm actually splitting the signal, I'm doing some fancy shit with it, but I'm basically only using this plugin. The cool thing is that you can download the presets and the audio files later. Amazing, right? Let's get started. But let's talk about Lemmy for a moment and let's talk about his rig. I think Lemmy was was the first inspiring bass player for me. I remember getting my first Motorhead vinyl record that was No Sleep at All, the live record. I bought it in Sweden uh, where my grandma lived and I fell in love with Motorhead and I bought everything. I have, I have a huge vinyl collection, a Motorhead vinyl collection and I fell in love with the bass tone. I think in the beginning I thought it was a guitar but it sounded so cool. So Lemmy was the first one who introduced me to bass tone, to dirty bass tones. And I think later came DD from Overkill. I think he was the one who invented the real dangle dangle, that modern sounding clanky bass tone. And Frank Bello from Anthrax. And later Danny Lilker, who was even more high gain. It's actually funny that they're all from New York, right? So maybe the dangle dangle is a, an invention from New York. Especially because, you know, the first device that people used to get that kind of sound was the Sense Amp. And Tech 21 is also from New York. So New York might be the motherland of the Dangle Dangle. Do you want me to travel there? To go to the origin of the Dangle? But, but let's go back to Motorhead. Let's go back to Lemmy's tone. Because Lemmy's tone has always been a little different from that typical clanky, clean... Dangle Dangle bass tone that a Sans Amp is giving you or that maybe a Dark Glass pedal is giving you. Lemmy's sound was always more rock and roll, more raunchy, more dirty, just less precise and less clean and also more, a little more sounding like a guitar, if you know what I mean. The same thing kind of happens if you drive a an Ampeg classic tube amp. It also goes into that direction, not as precise, not as tight, but with a lot of character. And to be honest, I actually prefer that kind of classic high gain tone to the dark glass sense amp kind of high gain tone, which is great as well, and which is a lot easier to mix. But this is a lot more fun. Nice, so let's have a look at the plugin itself. So um, first of all, we got some work to do because if we want to get that sound, we have to tweak the signal quite a bit because the default plugin sounds like this. Distorted, but kind of farty and not really metal. But I show you how to get here. So let me show you my signal path first. I'm playing this rather lovely Fernandez bass. I don't even know what it is called, but it was their take on the active Fender jazz bass. And I think it was their most expensive high-end bass right before they went out of business. And this one has an active 
EQ that I'm not really using. I'm slightly pushing the highs, that's all. I'm playing the bridge pickup and um, these are EMG active pickups. So it's it's a modern, modern jazz bass, if you want. Modern active jazz bass. Okay, from here, I'm going straight into the Cranbourne Audio Camden. It's the 500 module. They make some of the cleanest and most transparent sounding preamps. And just lately I found out that their DIs sound really, really nice. But one cool thing about the preamps is that they have this mojo feature. From the, from the Cranbourne Audio DI preamp, I'm splitting the signal and I'm going straight into the DAW, into Cubase through my SSL converters but I'm also going into another 500 module, which is the vocal leveler from Tegela Audio. German company, I guess you all know them. They're making some great stuff. This is their opto compressor. And I love opto compressors on vocals and bass like everybody else. So I'm using this a lot on bass and vocals. I'm also using the distressor a lot. Today I'm using the um, vocal leveler from Tegela. And you will see in the setup that I'm using for this tone, I'm actually using both signals, the compressed and the uncompressed signal. Let's open the plugin, because I think there are a few things I gotta explain. It looks like this. Cool thing is, it can be scaled. This is Lemmy's amp, this is the Murder One. He actually had a collection of those amps. Those are, Marshall Super Bass amps and the circuit of the Super Bass is really close to a Super Elite Plexi. From what I heard is it sounds a little bit darker, it sounds a little bit cleaner, it sounds a little less aggressive in the upper mids and people seem to use it as a great pedal platform. That's what I've read about it. So it's the cleaner, slightly darker version of the Marshall Super Lead. Marshall actually says that the Murder One, the circuit of the Murder One is somewhere in between a super bass and a super lead. But the important part is both were intended as guitar amps in the 70s. And like I said, Lemmy had a pretty big collection and all his amps had different names. So there was one amp called Killer, one amp called No Remorse, and this is his favorite, this is the Murder One. From what I know, the original Murder One is still at Cameron Webb's studio. Is that correct, Warren? Oh yes, Cameron surely does. It is a heck of an amazing sounding amplifier. If ever I was to hear one, I have been very blessed to try it out. In fact, I even recorded a Kemper pack with it. That is such a great amp. Let me have one of the best bass tones ever. Because I used to hear the Motorhead albums and think, wow, who's playing that really thick, incredible guitar sound? Well, it was Lemmy on bass with that amazing amp. Thank you. Very nice. So we got this amp and if we open this little panel, we can see we have two cabinets. They can be turned on and turned off. And on each cabinet, we have four different microphones. We've got an SM57, an SM7B, Sennheiser 421, and an AKG D12, all very classic microphones. And we got those four mics on both cabs. Yeah, the first cab here is the MF280L 4x12. That is actually a guitar cab. That is the Mode 4 guitar cab, which surprised me. And from what I, I've Googled around a little bit, but it seems to be exactly that cab with a slightly different look. So it's the oversized Marshall cabinet with vintage 30s. And of course, this one is responsible for that guitar-like grind that we get in Lemmy's bass tone. And then the other cabinet is a real bass cabinet, and this is the 1979L 4x15. And it is loaded with custom-made Eminence speakers. And Marshall actually released the whole package something like 10 years ago, so you could buy that amp and you could buy both those cabs. They were, they were not exactly cheap or affordable, but you could buy them. I tried to get the amp used, but I could never find one. Doesn't matter, now we got the, the plugin. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, oh, well, wait, we've got also got a gate. We've got a three band EQ, which is very effective and very handy, I will show you. And we got a master out. And a master out is important, of course, because 
a plexi kind of amp, doesn't have a master out. We just got two volumes, one volume for each channel, but those volumes are more like gain controls, as we all know. So if you're not familiar with the layout, the input layout of a plexi, we've got four inputs. And in a nutshell, the two left inputs are for this channel that I call the treble channel. There's a low gain and a high gain input, low sensitivity, high sensitivity. Let's have a listen. And this is where the dangle comes from. This is the low gain. This is the high gain version. And then on the right side, we got another two inputs. This is the low gain input for the bass channel. And the high gain version. And by using patch cables, you can combine those channels. So there are a lot of different options to, to play both channels simultaneously and to blend them. As you can hear, we're still pretty far away from, from a usable modern metal sound. So let's start tweaking. So what we gotta do is, first of all, you know that we wanna have our low end as clean as possible. You know, huge low end, no distortion, because distorting low end always sounds kind of fuzzy and farty, we don't want that. And we want a distorted um, mid-range and distorted treble range. So let's start with the low gain input on the treble channel. First thing you have to do is you remove the bass. So if we send less bass into the distortion, the distortion gets more precise and tighter. Let's just add some upper frequencies. That's nice. Now let's check out the other channel. And we want the other channel to be as clean as possible. Let's see how far we can go. I'm plugged into the low sensitivity input. Maybe until here. And let's bring back this channel. But now, you know, we need a patch cable. So I want to have the treble channel as my main input. And then I want to patch from the treble channel to the low gain input, like this. And now I can mix both channels. And that's already much better, right? So let's have a look at the cabinets next. Let's just check out the guitar cab first. That sounds really good. A nice dense mid grind. Let's check out the other mics. Let's grind. A little scooped, but also a little bigger. 57 just sound much better, much more rock and roll. That sounds weird, a little honky. And that is a kick drum microphone, so it has a lot of highs and sounds rather scooped. Interesting, but I just prefer the rock and roll sound, the, the dense mid-range and the grind of the 57 on a V30. Great. Let's check out the bass cab. And you can see that sounds a lot cleaner. It doesn't have the mid grind. It has a cleaner low end and a more precise hi-fi sounding high end. And it's less compressed. So you have more dang 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 attack. So 
So this is closer to a modern bass sound. So if we add some low end here and some highs, we get a pretty good clanky tone, not overly distorted, but let's go back a little more distortion again. Let's see which microphone we want. So this is our bass cab. This is our low end. We want the most low end possible. Let's have a listen. Ah, much better. I want the SMC 7B. Let's bring back the guitar cab. Nice. Okay, what I need now is, I need more real low end, and it sounds a little too dirty and a little too out of control in the lower mid-range, like in the, around 500, too woody. Which is a part of that classic distortion, but I wanna have it a little more modern, a little more clean. So let's use the three band EQ. Let's add some low end first. That's nice. Now let's find those woody frequencies and get rid of them. So here around 1K, we got the dangle. Here we got our low end and somewhere in between. If we take out those lower mids, things just get a lot cleaner. Let's add some highs. This is a lot of fun to play. And now you can fine tune this by changing the balance of the cap. So if you push the bass cap, things will get a little cleaner and have more low end, more balls. And if you push this, you get more grind, more guitar-like distortion. And now it depends on volume one or gain one on how dirty you want things to sound. This just might be enough clank for a lot of people. I want more. But this is a nice tone. This is a, like a nice bastard between classic and modern, don't you think? Not the most precise tone, but it has a lot of character. But then I decided I want a little more, especially I want a little more low end, a cleaner low end and maybe even more distortion, but it wasn't possible with just one amp alone. So I decided to use two murder one amps, murder two, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was, I just copied my track in Cubase, including the same settings for Murder 1. So I had two Murder 1 plugins. On one track, I was only using the bass channel, and on the other track, I was only using the treble channel. So let's have a listen. I've already prepared this here. So this is the bass channel only. So you see, I'm going into the low sensitivity input of the bass channel. The other one is turned off. I've boosted the bass around here. No high boost. And I'm only using the bass cabinet because I don't need the grind. And I brought back some of the bass here as well. But this becomes my low end channel. Slightly driven still, not completely clean. 
but now I, ca I can control the volume of my low end separately. And then I have another channel, which is called the Dangle channel. And it sounds like this. Here I'm using both cabinets. I think these settings are the same like what I just showed you. And I'm using one additional feature that SoftTube added. And this is a high pass filter here, removing everything below 200 Hertz. So we're just left with a grind. And you can see this channel is turned off and I'm just going this time into the high gain input. Nice. And if we combine the two, it gets really, really nice, fat, dangle, dangle and clean. And the cool thing is now I can just grab the fader in Cubase and define the amount of low end I want. And this is the ultimate combination of traditional, dirty, a lot of distortion, but with a clean and modern low end. Again, you can download those presets. That will be quite some fun for you. And to make this even nicer, you can do two more things. This is fine tuning and you will need other plugins for this. So the first thing you might want to do is you want to push the mids before you go into the amp. Have a look at this. I'm adding Pro Q3 and look at this. This is the healthy 10 dB boost around 2K. Let me turn it off. And on. Dang, 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 dang. So you can sound even more nasty if you if you boost certain frequencies going into the amp. Let's have a listen. Super clanky. So that's one thing that makes the sound even more aggressive. The other thing I did was, do you remember my signal path? So I was splitting the signal right after the preamp. One part is going straight into the DAW, that's what we're hearing right now, but it's also going into the Tegela vocal level compressor, where I'm compressing around 5 dB. And this is a very, very smooth and natural sounding compressor, especially for bass and, and vocals. Opto compression. And I found out that if I, if, if I use this input for the low end channel, let's have a listen. So this is before. Now the tail end. So this is a compressor just before the low end channel. And it makes the low end so much more thicker and, and solid. Again, this is without. And I can hear more of the bass bouncing around compared to the compressed version. Just, just nailed. One important thing when you use my um, presets, the preset, the sound of the preset highly depends on the bass you use. You need some fresh strings, but you know, I also used, if you use this with a passive bass, it's gonna sound completely different. It's gonna have very different levels. I'm right now playing the bridge pickup and I'm slightly boosting the highs with an EQ. That's what I'm doing. But I'm pretty sure whatever bass you are using, you have to fine tune those presets, okay? It's not like with high gain guitars where, where 
you know, where the bridge pickups sounds more or less the same, bass guitars sound widely different. So it's not gonna be instant plug and play unless you have a bass that sounds close to what I'm using. But, you know, you are, you're also getting all the audio tracks. I'm giving you the DI tracks and I'm giving you the uh, bounced version, including the plugin, so you can compare it. And I'm also giving you the backing track, the drums. So yeah, you can, you will have a lot of fun with it, right? Okay, now you wanna know how to download. What you have to do is you have to subscribe to my email list. There's a link below, subscribe to my email list. In the final confirmation mail, uh, there's a link, there are actually two links, but there's one link to a zip file. You can download all those files. There's another link to my Discord channel. So if you wanna meet other people like me and you, um, we got a private Discord group where we talk metal and audio and stuff like that. The Cola Audio Cult Discord group. So subscribe to my email list. You'll get two links, one for the download, one for the Discord group. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, what can I say about this plugin? It basically has one sound. It basically has one sound. Yeah, you can get a little cleaner if you just use the bass cap and stuff, you know, but it has that sound, that traditional distortion that sounds more gritty and more raunchy than let's say a dark glass pedal or a sans amp, but it has a lovely character. I can't tell how close Softube actually got, got to the real amp because I've never played the real amp. I don't know, but I can say it sounds cool. And what I can say, what I have to say about Softube is that one of the very, very few plug-in high-gain guitar amps that I use is made by Softube, and that is the Silver Jubilee UAD Marshall thing. That one sounds really good. If you combine two tracks, blend two tracks of that one with a more modern high-gain distortion, it sounds really cool. Boosted with a Tube Screamer, that is a great plug-in. So Softube know how to do guitar plugins. I don't know what the price is, because I have not paid anything for this plugin. I got it for free, but I'm gonna use it. Uh, so I don't know the price. If it's cheap or expensive, I don't know. I don't know, there might be a discount right now. Just head over to the Softube uh, website. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put, put a link there. Um, go there, check out the price, get the plugin if you like it, there might be a discount. That's all for today. I wanna see you in the comments section. Let me know what you think of this plugin. I wanna see you on my Discord channel, right? See you on my Discord channel, and uh, uh, so we can talk about whatever. Have a nice discussion about audio and dangle dangle and whatever. And of course, I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye bye.